Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for March 31st, 2023. Well, we finally made it to the end of the quarter, and today is probably the last day um, of the month that we will we'll experience some window dressing. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. How about we take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. Well first off we had a pretty good day yesterday. Those bulls came in and they um, gapped the market up and then the bears came in and we pushed the market all the way down and filled the gap and then we kind of saw the bulls come back in kind of grind ourselves back to the upside which is kind of an interesting, uh, leaves kind of an interesting price pattern here on the diamonds. As you can see, diamonds, um, two days in a row now, we've kind of had a hanging man pattern, which is sometimes can be a bearish uh, pattern out there. And as you can see, boy, we're pushing again this morning in the diamonds. We're pushing, 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 trying to squeeze everything we can here in the market. One of the things I have been kind of surprised about is they've really not been able to trigger any kind of major short squeeze, but they still have another day to potentially do that. Now, if you've been paying attention, I've moved this line up here and I've changed a couple of colors because one of the things we have to uh, recognize is that we have broken this downtrend now in the chart so that becomes a little bit on the bullish side and what you're going to want to watch is if we find any kind of rest or pullback we need that rest or pullback to hold in here on this trend someplace find that price support hold in here develop uh, um, that trend and then see if we can push back up off of that position but we certainly have a lot of resistance above and if we take a look here at the diamonds i move this up just ever so slightly to this next resistance level in the chart you can see we've got these little points in here showing us that resistance of course we're all of that price action there price action here and if i were to pull this across there's a lot a lot more of those points here in the chart but if you'll take a look i think that's probably our next upside resistance level in the chart if we could push up into there would seem um, rather logical um, if the bulls find inspiration today in the market now if the bears were to find inspiration today i would suggest maybe a pullback into this area would be a logical pullback um, those would be fairly big point moves too so you want to be prepared for that possibility if we happen to get some bad data today now one of the reasons this um, this line up here uh, resistance line makes some pretty good sense is if we look over here at our um, moving averages and you can see our 50-day moving averages right in here and if I put that line back on then we're right up here kind of testing and drawing up toward that 50-day moving average. So watch that closely, that possibility that we can press up toward that 50-day. Um, it would be logical to see them on a, you know, a last day of a quarter to try and stretch us up there as long as the data doesn't turn us around, um, you know, for a bearish move. Now, if we were to take a look at our SPY, our SPY, I changed a couple colors here as well, as you can see, popping through that resistance right here in that downtrend. So that's showing that bullishness here in the chart. And if we can continue to push on higher, well, notice what I've done. I've stretched this up here just a little bit more. Notice that I put um, resistance level right up in this area because I do think that's the stronger area. You certainly could make a case that right there, right there, this last high could challenge us for moving higher, but I press that up there. This is the stronger resistance area in the chart. You can see as I draw this across, a lot of price resistance in that area of the chart. So I would probably suggest if we don't stop right here, then look for that 
push up into that area. And if we see those bears find inspiration, well, I'm going to pull this right back up into here and say a pullback into this area would be the next test of support. And we'd have to see if we could hold on to that trend and um, get those bulls to defend in that area. If they are not able to do that and we were to slip back below, boy, that next level in here is down here someplace um, in that chart. That would be a pretty painful pullback if that were to occur. Let's take a look at our QQQ. Now, QQQ also pushed hard in. As you can see, I've moved this line up because we broke this resistance yesterday. We broke through there. We've uh, struggled with this area before, but we broke through that yesterday, pushing on through to the upside. So that next upside resistance level is right up in here. You can see that's a fairly good resistance level. And once again, if I extend that across, there's much more out there um, in price resistance in the chart. We've been holding and maintaining this bullish trend here in QQQ. Um, I honestly, um, with the uncertainties about um, earnings coming up, I am honestly surprised that the tech giants are garnering so much uh, love and attention by the market because it just seems to me that they're going to struggle a little bit in this next uh, coming quarters on earnings just because the consumer has weakened. Um, so we'll see if I'm right or wrong or not. I don't want to make that a prediction, but we'll, we will want to consider that as if we start to pull back, if there is a faltering that happens in the market, the QQQ would be the most overextended here at the moment and could be one of the hardest to suffer if we were to fail in this market. Right now, there's no sign of that. So what I've done is I've moved that, um, that resistance target higher and if we were to pull back in this market if we were to slip and fall pull back there's our next level of price support if we were to come back and that still holds trend so that would still be bullish chart here as long as we don't give up that area in here in the chart now remember we could still as a resting pattern just kind of bounce around and slide over here to trend and as we get through this end of quarter, remember the uncertainty about these earnings are really going to start coming into play as we um, stretch out. And we've got a couple of weeks before we're going to begin um, earnings. Remember our big banks are gonna kick it off and BlackRock um, starts this whole thing off this next quarter and that won't be until the 13th. So we have all of this time to kind of ponder what's going to happen. So I really wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of a consolidation or a rest or pullback over that next couple of weeks. Then if we take a look at IWM, well, IWM continues to be the weakest of the indexes. That guy rallied up nicely yesterday, but smacked its head right into that resistance and ended up turning in a bearish candle on the day. Once again, it's trying to pop up here this morning with a little bit of pre-market pump. Um, notice that we're kind of hanging in there on that big bear trend break, trying to hold in there. So I'm still gonna give bulls the edge here on this, at least temporarily. We're gonna wanna watch that big resistance area in the chart. And if they can break through there, well, Unfortunately, we're still a long ways from becoming bullish here in IWM. Maybe we press a little bit higher into some of these other resistance areas, as you can see right into here um, in that chart. But doggone it, um, still in a major downtrend here on IWM. Now, we'll want to keep in mind if those bears were to find inspiration, then the really the only support we show in this chart is, price support area is right down in here so we'll want to keep a pretty close eye on that again on the technicals here of the chart there is that possibility that we could squeeze this hard enough if we got a good moving average squeeze or a good um, um, short squeeze here in the market maybe we could press up into that 200 day moving average but at this point in time, that looks to be a pretty big stretch and we need something pretty powerful, I think, in economic numbers to make that occur. Certainly doable uh, with the numbers we have coming today. Let's take a look at our VIX. 
our VIX, very, very interesting here in the VIX. We popped up and we were pushing up just a little bit as we were selling back off in the market. But boy, by the end of the day, no fear. We uh, dropping down here to a 19 reading on um, the VIX. We'll want to kind of keep an eye right here. Notice that we've broken, um, slipped down below that upside trend here, and we could be pressing into some next support levels. So right now, you got to give this to the bulls. They are holding very, very strong. Seems to be no fear in the market. And that does seem a little bit odd to me, considering the uncertainties that we have out there. But for now, there's just no fear. And one of the other things is I think one of the reasons VIX is showing up as showing uh, being a little bit odd um, here lately is right now um, we're seeing 40, 50 percent of the entire volume of the market is folks trading like zero data expiration options. Um, it's become the new fad here in the market and my worry is that's going to draw the attention of the SEC and there could be some major changes uh, coming to the market here eventually, particularly if that kind of activity creates some kind of a major problem. Um, if we were to get some kind of a flash crash or something like that um, out of it, that draws the attention of the SEC and then, then we all typically get punished when something like that occurs. If we take a look um, at our volume of these indexes, one of the things I failed to mention, our volume of these indexes continue to be a little bit on the weak side. It did pick up right at the end of the day yesterday in the NASDAQ. SPY stayed a little weak and Diamond's very, very weak um, in its volume here. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now our T2122, well, dug on it yesterday um, at the morning gap up, we were right up here into that bearish reversal zone. And with the whipping around that we did yesterday, we are still kind of pressed right up against that um, ceiling area here in T2122. But that doesn't mean we still have some upside opportunity. If we can get some uh, good economic data today, I'd see no reason, and with the, you know, the idea of end of quarter window dressing, that there might be that bullish push in here, and that leaves us that upside opportunity. Now, if we get a short squeeze on the day, which I do think is still possible, that short squeeze could really press us clear up here into that 100 area of T2122 and then I really want to be thinking about taking profits in the market. I don't want to be chasing anything long at that point in time because I would be expecting a pullback. And if we get that pullback today, well just keep in mind that we have a big downside opportunity if for some reason those bears decide to attack. Let's take a look at our T2108. A T2108 had a nice little improvement yesterday. Sorry, that's a two day chart. There we go. Um, had a nice little improvement yesterday. And as you can see, pushing up into this next level of price resistance. That's kind of what I suggested yesterday that we'd come off of here, maybe push up into here. And we still have a little bit of upside opportunity to push up into some additional resistance in the chart. Maybe up there into that 30 area, maybe squeeze it pretty hard up into the 34, 35 area of T2108. Does seem possible. So keep a close eye on that. You want to also make note that if we were to follow this trend right in here, well, then we could press up into here uh, before we find some of those resistance levels in T2108. Um, Lynn, T2107, let's take a look at that. We've got about 43% 40, uh, of the stocks holding above their 200 day moving average. So we have had a nice improvement there, but you will want to also keep in mind, we're pressing into some resistance in this chart. So watch that closely. We're going to need some kind of extra push here to maybe break through some of those levels and maybe come up here toward that 50% or 50% of our stocks holding above our 200 day moving average. So watch that closely coming into a little bit of resistance. And we also want to keep in mind there's that downtrend. So watch that carefully. Our T2101 
T2101 continued to extend to the upside, showing that that momentum push is pushing to that upside here in the market. It doesn't seem all that energetic because our volume is so weak, but watch that closely. If they can continue that push today, um, then we're gonna start reaching back up in here toward these downtrending areas. If I can continue to push, watch that carefully. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar for today. Now our economic calendar, we've got a, um, well, we've got, uh, doggone it, I don't have my economic calendar up and available. Um, look at that, I'm not ready for it. Um, so I apologize. Our economic calendar today, we have our um, personal income and outlays number here. And this is the Fed's favorite reading on inflation. And if we take a look at this number, what we're gonna find um, on the consensus is they're suggesting that the core PCE is going to stay flat at 4.7%. We'll wanna watch that pretty carefully. Now, they are suggesting that the month over the over month and year over year numbers decline, but that core PCE number they're suggesting stays flat. We'll wanna watch that pretty closely. We need to see those declining. And if we were to see those um, get a nice sharp decline, then we could get some bullishness coming in the market pretty easily. If for some reason that doesn't improve all that much, of course, that would be the reason that those bears would engage and get going here on the market. Now, keep in mind, we also have a Chicago PMI. Now, our PMI numbers have been terrible. Um, um, that's contraction in the economy. And um, our PMI is expected to remain flat over last month. And then we've got a consumer sentiment number here that we'll want to be watching at 10 a.m. Keep in mind, later on in the day, we've got um, some Fed speakers. I don't know that they're going to be, one of them's well after the bell. I don't know that they're going to be all that much in the market moving. So it's going to be these numbers right up here first thing in the morning that are likely to move at that. And when it comes to earnings today, guys, we have several earnings um, um, out there, but almost all of them are these little teeny tiny small caps. They're, they're, I can't find a single notable for today um, that would be any kind of market moving report. So on the notable front for earnings, not much of anything going on there today. And that's fairly typical for the last day of the quarter. So uh, no big surprise. Let's take a look um, at our um, some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find them to be useful or helpful, if you could please do me that favor and click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. I truly, truly appreciate it. Always feel free to share these videos out on your social media feed. That helps a bunch. And just a big shout out to folks who continue to support the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link. It's just below the title of the video. You guys are truly awesome. Thank you so much. I never, ever expected there'd be this many people that um, would be watching these videos. So thank you so much. How about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. And remember guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you've got to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful here in this market. Still big point moves are possible. I still think there is that possibility of the banking contagion, it worries over um, uh, of earnings can still come into play pretty easily. So watch that carefully um, over the next couple of weeks. Now let's take a look at some of these stocks that are looking just pretty darn good. Now I've got to continue to point out this uh, Palo Alto. Uh, Pan W looking really, really good. Yesterday it popped up here into my alert, but we were so soft in the market initially. Um, as we gapped up in the morning, sellers came in immediately and pushed us back down. So didn't make any reaction to this um, alert in here. But I got to tell you, this is still setting up very, very well. Potentially more upside coming in Palo Alto. I've got to continue to mention gold. By golly, gold made a nice pop yesterday, pushing up, good little surge there to the upside, holding in on that support level. 
trying to get a little bit going here this morning as you can see if we look at our US dollar our US dollar trying to gap a little bit higher this morning but immediately finding some sellers in the pre-market that's certainly going to have an effect on gold but right now gold holding in there nicely now if I were to um, um, suggest trend in here I do think this trend here a little bit on too steep it's too parabolic in here but at the same time we're pressing toward 2000 um, in in GLD and that 2000 that big round number um, could easily um, you know per ounce the spot gold price um, could easily draw that uh, gold right up to that now a little bit more rest or consolidation in here does seem likely to me overall but keep a close eye on that you might also if you want remember gld is paper gold um, if you want some physical gold um, check out this ETF. Um, I would recommend that you go to the, their website, check them out. But what you do when you're buying PHYS is you're buying portions of physical gold. They store that gold and you can request once you receive, uh, once you have enough um, quantity of gold that you hold, you can actually request that they ship it to you. So um, keep that in mind if you want more of the physical gold. If you're worried about uh, US dollar, strength of US dollar, um, the, the digital dollar that looks like it's on its way, watch that closely. Uh, PHYS, that nice pop yesterday on that. You could also take a look at uh, PSLV. PSLV is physical silver and it has also been on a run to the upside. Now I will say it's running into a pretty substantial resistance area here in the chart. Probably deserves a pretty good rest consolidation or pullback but just keep in mind if it were to rest or pull back and hold on to this price support and consolidate a little bit then that may still be ready for some upside here in the chart so watch that closely here overall any hold in this area would seem to be a pretty good opportunity you could also take a look at SLV as well um, those are um, SLV is holding into the same kind of pattern showing lots of strength here overall you might want to take a look at some of the miners out there uh, Newmont mining could be potentially setting up look at this nice little price pattern that we're showing here on Newmont Newmont right in here holding right in there on that uh, support level here in the chart I think that is worth keeping an eye on and paying attention to didn't mean to draw that line um, so watch that closely and then there's like Barry Gold there's um, AUY, AU, um, GDX, GDXJ if you're looking for some junior miners or uh, minor ETFs. All of those have been very, very strong here recently and continue to show lots of bullishness. AG for a potential silver play. Boy, we gapped way down and just straight back up here. Lots of bullishness in those precious metals. So keep a close eye on that. You know, you might also, with some of the supply disruptions that we're starting to hear about from Russia, you might want to keep an eye on some of these commodity ETFs like corn. Little resting pullback in here. Notice this little double bottom formation forming up here in the chart. Um, there may be that possibility that we could hold a higher low of support, particularly with what Russia is doing. If we can hold that in there, hold that higher low, might be an opportunity um, to watch some of those commodity ETFs that we're seeing the same thing here in wheat. Let's take a look at um, some of the other stocks out there looking pretty good. Wing Casinos um, holding on to that price support in here um, showing lots of lots of willingness not to well to defend against those bears that have tried to push this down a couple of times and you can see holding in here nicely I would look for that next opportunity that could set that up just any time here to the upside watch that close as you guys know I've been mentioning Roku Roku popped hard yesterday popped up found some resistance pulled back again to this support we continue to chop in this wide range here but I still think it's worth keeping an eye on um, as far as the big techs go um, I think we've got to really keep an eye on stocks like AMD. 
Um, I looked at maybe buying that yesterday, and the thing that kept me from buying it yesterday um, is this idea that this may still consolidate out here to trend. Notice that we, we shot up nice and strong here. We pulled back and we saw buyers stepping up here, but then eventually just kind of faded back into the trend. So I'm watching that closely. Keep that one on your list, but you may want to just be a little bit careful and cautious. That's a pretty steep uh, trend if that's um, if that's the trend that's going to uh, play out in AMD. I will say stocks like Amazon, beautiful upside. I mentioned this yesterday, continuing to follow through to the upside, looking very strong, nice strong support level in here. If you'll draw a trend right up through here on that chart, you'll notice where we're hanging in there. So any consolidating or resting that pulls back into this support still sets up that next opportunity to the upside. I'm gonna say pretty much the same thing about Apple after breaking through this resistance and holding it as support. As we move up along this trend here in the chart, any rest or consolidating pullback shows that would show that opportunity to the upside. Microsoft and their um, uh, AI push um, has been very, very helpful here for Microsoft. Pushing up, I will say that this is probably getting a little bit stretched in that upside trend. I would be watching for more of a little consolidation rest or pullback to occur in here. But as long as it holds support, maybe slides back out to, toward this trend, I would still be looking for some upside opportunity. So there's quite a few stocks that are looking good and there's a lot of them all over the place out there showing that bullishness. And there's even a little bit of bearishness. Now I have a little bit of a bias on this because I went short here yesterday. I picked up a short trade on XLF. Um, I think once we get past this end of quarter um, monkeying around that happens um, every, every quarter, um, that we're going to see a little bit of concern coming into um, what happens when those big banks report uh, in a couple of weeks. And so I picked up a short position here, and, and I'm not expecting to stay in this long, but watch that closely. There are still um, stocks out there that are setting up good shorting patterns like Foot Locker running into this downtrend. So if you're looking for some short positions, they are certainly out there. And there may be some reason to be thinking about that with our T2122 kind of extending up there into that bearish reversal zone. So with that, everyone, have an awesome, awesome day. Thanks so much for being here today. Um, there is no blog this morning. It's uh, with, with no notable earnings. I decided not to write a blog this morning. So a um, little bit lazy, I guess, this week. Um, I want to wish you all the best. Um, also, have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you guys right back here, bright and early Monday morning. Take care, everyone.